on the menu today. Because what I want to try to do is write a song right here in front of your eyes. That by the end of this video will be a finished production. So I've been a little sneaky. Welcome. The dogs don't have tusks, only elephants. That's how they used to get the ivory. Oh, hello Chip Dibbers. Welcome to Retro. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Don't do that. Perry Fractic here and Puppy Fractic, your friends in Retro. And as you probably know, if you watched the channel before, oh my, uh, I usually make retro computing, retro gaming videos, but I also feature my retro music. Indeed, as I say on my website, I've been making retro music since before it was retro. And the theme song that you just heard and that you're hearing in the background now, it's called The Lost Years. And that's one of the many songs that I've written over the past 30 years. And when I've released music videos for those theme songs, I've often got a lot of comments from people saying, how do people write a song? And you know, I can really understand that because how do you go from nothing and silence to the finished result that you're listening to now? There's a quote by Michelangelo that I really like. I'm not in any way, in shape or form, comparing myself to Michelangelo. But the quote, he said that the sculpture or the statue was always there inside the marble. His job was just to remove the superfluous material around it. And I think for any songwriter, uh, after the song is finished, it certainly feels like the song has always been there. And our job was just to release it from the ether. Um, so for example, uh, The Lost Years, which is the theme tune, has three parts, the verse, chorus, and the middle eight. And before I recorded it, I would have got to a kind of piano version of it. How does a songwriter, or how do I, get from nothing to even that? Well, that's a really good question. So, there are two main ways that that happens. One is kind of weird. Um, there are several songs that I've fully dreamt up in my sleep. That's why I always keep my phone by my bed, because I have hundreds of voice memos or voice notes, even going back to dictaphone tapes, where I would literally just wake up at all. 6 a.m., usually in the early hours of the morning for some reason, and just record the song. The second way that I write songs is to just play around, mess around on the keyboard and just wait till you hear something that sounds like a song you would want to hear. But the internet being the internet, it, I don't know how this is gonna go, but if I did come up with something incredible, I wouldn't want people to comment, oh, there's no way you just came up with that in five seconds. So I've been a little sneaky. Uh, a couple of days ago, I posted a message on my Patreon just asking people to comment with one letter of the alphabet between A and K. Now, obviously, there are only eight notes in an octave and they go from A to G. And why did I go to K? I didn't want to give the game away and have people realize, oh, hey, we're writing a song in the comments. So uh, what I've done is stripped out all the superfluous letters and that's given us basically some random letters, some random notes. So if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna start playing around with those notes and see if we can develop it into a song that by the end of this video will be a finished production. Here goes nothing. incredible. Wow. I need a pen. Not 
start of the song. <coughs> I didn't think this would be quite as catchy. This happens a lot. I'll keep making mistakes and eventually get it down. But sometimes those mistakes lead to a new avenue for the song, which inspires something that you hadn't thought of. So I actually quite enjoy and embrace the mistakes. See, now it's leading to something that I had never thought of. you have to remember the stuff that you wrote before. So let's move on. As I said, that's what we're up to. Let's try the next bit. It goes F and B. Doesn't sound good. Got any ideas how to fix that B? Doesn't sound in place, does it? Little inspiration, please. Bye. Well, I am back again from a little break. So messing around with those particular notes wasn't really working out. Sometimes that happens, you know, things aren't going to work out the way that you expect. I think, honestly, we got really lucky with those first sequence of notes. Pure fluke that they actually played a really nice song on their own. And then I was inspired what sounded like it would come next in my mind and just played that. I think now instead of trying to play the exact notes and hope that that's going to work, into, work out into a song, I'm actually just going to play through the notes and wait till I hear something that sounds more inspirational. So, less pressure, let's play around with those. See, there's something there. Obviously, the other part of it I'm putting in is the bass. And here I'm just working through the notes to see what goes with that upper melody on the treble. two main sections. One could be a verse, one could be a chorus, or they could be a middle eight or a bridge. Just takes you away from the main song just to give a bit of variety, different melody, and then kicks back into the chorus again at the end. I was looking for something that's about three and a half minutes long. So we've done pretty well. So uh, let's see what I used here. I elaborated around it a little bit. So BGFD would have been Still nice. Uh, and that's how it became that. So I really like it. And sometimes I'll just keep playing it over and over. And then, you know, you can kind of um, turn it into chords and just make it into 
uh, backing sequence. sort of discordant sound. Basically, in layman's terms, I'm playing the notes closer to each other. I just think it sounds a little bit more ethereal, romantic, I don't know how you describe it. with that as well. Love it. Okay, why don't we move on, see what other melodies are trapped inside this piece of marble. Just paper. And this isn't marble or paper either, but these are PCBs and they're made from fiberglass. I mentioned that because if you need your own great quality PCBs, I recommend PCB Way! Because as we all know, PCB stands for Performance Composition Board. Or something like that. Isn't it? Anyway, with that said, back to playing around with notes. So next we've got G, A, B, B. <laughs> Why is this so good? an H in there. Lady <laughs> Practic? Yeah. Trimming your bush again? Yep. <laughs> so you're American. How do you pronounce hurt? Hurt. Okay. How do you pronounce herb? Herb. Well, here. It's the H you keep dropping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hurt yourself? tells us is that the key, pardon the pun, is the bass line brings kind of the emotion to it. And there are only certain bass keys that will go with a, a melody in the treble section. You can again just mess around and find the bass chords that go along with it. So, so far out of more than half the notes, only this little section I couldn't really uh, find anything with, but the rest have almost note for note being able to be turned into a melody. And then I hear a little something to join. So you can join the two. You get the idea. Okay. There's my girl. You get, like to give me a little break. So about every 20 minutes, she'll come over and um, basically telling me it's break time, or in other words, tummy tickles time. That's the dog version. That's interesting. <laughs> That's not. I'm hearing something better that could come next. <laughs> not that. can see here, this is the purest, the simplest chord you could play. C major, 
and uh, do something different on the bass, but you could do the same. So all it's done is extrapolated down to B. So instead of it's see the little difference, but it, it's nicer in a way. And then you just play around the chord in a kind of arpeggio. So of all the letters that I extrapolated from that mystical comment thread that I posted on Patreon, we've used well over half of them in almost the exact sequence that they were typed. A few little flourishes and changes here and there, and we've now got four main melodic sections to a song. Let's smooth out the timing and put the rest of our musical sculpture together. music to my ears, pun definitely intended, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of how it is possible to turn completely random notes into a complete song. But as I mentioned at the start, I want us to turn this into an 80s styled musical chip tune. So I invite you to subscribe and join me next time where we try out Insidious with our little song. Insidious is a new reproduction of the Commodore 64's wonderful SID sound chip in the form of a software instrument that you can use with modern music software. And I just can't wait for us to find out if it'll strike the right chord and hold the key. <coughs> Sorry. Until then, subscribe and support below. And cheerio.